Hello and welcome to Last Mixer Podcast. My name is Stephen White. On this week's show, we look back and pick out the five most striking albums of 2024 so far and the latest music from the week that was. But first... Yes, dear listener, you're very welcome back to Last Mixtape Podcast with me, Stephen White. And in this week's episode, I thought we'd look back on the five albums that really stood out to me in 2024 so far, because we have hit the halfway point of the year. Now, this will be in no particular order, no favourites just yet. We have not reached that point of the year where we delve into the albums and really take a look at them. But these are the ones that we reviewed here on the Last Mixtape Podcast and that really stood out. Out. Starting off with New Dad and their debut album, Madra, and it is a brilliantly portrayed dream pop record with a real razor's edge to it. It really captured the imagination of my imagination this year. We're playing with contrasting textures and contrasting music. It has kind of the alt rocky sound mixed with the dream pop. There's an edge, there's a growl to the entire record, and kind of maintaining that over a long period of time is quite difficult to do and they do it especially for a band so early on in their career and they're really part of that wave of dream pop bands coming out of Ireland right now that are really recapturing it and it's only fitting because of bands like My Bloody Valentine and stuff like that and the standout track on this record for me and the one I would say give it a listen before you dive into the album is Angel the opening track actually on the record and there's a real buzzsaw dreamlike feel to it that really plays into that contrast but yeah one of the bands of the year one of the albums of the year as well it's not the last time we'll hear about dream pop on this list but yeah a hell of a record and a hell of a start to their career from new dot and to our little list moving on then to our next record number two on the list but not in a particular order uh, pillow queens with name your sorrow third time out for these guys and they have most certainly open the scope of their record. It's interesting how the scale and scope of their music, along with the angsty feel, the emotional weight that's always been behind their music, they're almost moving into kind of almost terms of sound, the Sinead O'Connor type feel of their of their music. They really capture a sound and they really have a, a kind of almost like a stranglehold on the Irish music scene in terms of uh, how they capture the imagination. Whenever they do something, people are always going to listen and they're playing the Ivy Gardens. They're, they're headlining a huge show and it stands to reason that their new record is an absolute belter. The sound track on this one is Suffer, which is a heartfelt edged uh, track that um, really once again plays into the emotional weight of the music and the emotional feeling that um, Pillow Queens really capture. You know that feeling in all of us of wanting to, to express sadness or express you know, um, you know want and isolation and things like that and they're really great at doing that. The band the vocals, the songwriting, they really are a band that over the years of watching them throughout, they've really kind of captured uh, what it is they're trying to portray in their music. And they are a great, great band. This is a great, great album. Name Your Sorrow on our list. Up next, kind of in the midway point, let's say it's the midway point, uh, Melts with Field Theory. And yeah, this is a sonic journey into the post-kraut rock world uh, or post-punk world or whatever you want to call it. But this is quite kaleidoscopic in its nature, quite kind of driving music as they've always done uh, with Mel's and it's, it's a true sonic journey. It's hypnotic in its musical passages and engulfing in its performances. The band, once again, almost like Pillow Queens, are one that really know how to just get their music and put it into a position and put it into a place where it really just grabs the listener and you're along with them for the ride of the entire record and it is a great, great record as well with a standout track coming from them with a, it is a Shelter of the Shade which has a, a real kind of one of these days Pink Floyd kind of like driving pulsing nature to it it's all about the rhythm it's all about the forward motion as is the record uh, Field Theory by Melts and that's yeah another one of my standout records this year at number four but not in a particular order dear listener our viewer indeed uh, Virgins with Nothing Hurt and everything was beautiful. What a title for a record. And another debut album, and we're delving once again into the dream pop world of um, Virgins and the Irish music scene as well, really kind of playing into that kind of sound at the moment. And they really made their presence felt with this kind of sonic offering, which has a more alt rock, harder edge to it, 
that New Dad has. It really kind of pushes and pulls and growls. There's real melody in there, but it's edged. There's sharpness to the music. Again, for such a young band to play into their influences, which are huge influences of uh, my buddy Valentine, the Cocteau Twins, especially the Cocteau Twins, there's moments that really do, I think the standout track, Softer, that really plays into that Cocteau Twins-esque kind of nature of the grandeur of the music with this kind of bustling bed behind it. Very, very hard to do, very hard to do and really capture people's ima imagination with it because the level of production and songwriting and performance needed to do that is, is quite off the scale. So for a debut album from Virgins, yeah, it's a hell of a record and don't sleep on that one. Nothing hurt and everything was beautiful. And finally, we're going to cap this one off with number five, but not in a particular order, dear listener or viewer. It is Fine Art. We were talking about this last week, and uh, this is the uh, much anticipated record from uh, Kneecap. And uh, yeah, returning back to them, and I have to say, although I had my criticisms of this record, and I still do, that the highs, the creamy highs, <laughs> are uh, way greater and way outweigh the kind of conceptual uh, uh, lows of the record. There are some amazing, amazing moments and for the social impact that this record will have, the social impact that Kneecap have, how well it's portrayed in its more bustling nature, in its more forthright nature and how it is, it is a growled, incendiary type record. Yeah, you have to have to talk about this one as one of the capture the imagination in 2024 and is very much at the forefront of everyone's thoughts in the Irish music scene at the moment. The standout track on there is Better Way to Live featuring Green Chatton and yeah it's really it was one of the lead singles off the record as well and you can see why it just really melds what they do in with what Green does and also captures I think best captures the, con the concept of the conceit of fine art as a record and yeah it's going to be one that I, th I really do think is a future Irish uh, classic for all it's kind of little flaws in there if the concept but yeah the highs are truly high on this record so why not check that out and those are my five albums there have been many albums of this year that i've covered and that doesn't mean there are any of them i didn't like them or anything like that i did but i just wanted to kind of whittle it down to five that i really liked who knows where we will be come december and where we will be when we're making the top 20 Irish albums of the year. Hopefully we'll have way more music as well to talk about and way more great albums. I feel like we will might be even talking about and touching about that later on. But those are the five albums from 2024 that have stood out to me so far. Yes, dear listener, they seek him here, they seek him there, those musos seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven or is he at the disco? That damned elusive Count of Monty playlist. Oh yes, dear listener, the style and profile limousine ride, jet flying, playlist making, son of a gun, has returned once more with another beautiful bounty in the form of new music from the Irish music scene, all put into one playlist, the greatest playlist. There ain't no one who can do it better, ain't nobody as Shaka Khan once said, and it was about the Count of Monty playlist though. Let us jump into this week's picks. <sighs> yes, <laughs> let's start off with Fontaine's DC and their new single favorite coming from their up coming album we've already had a glimpse with Starburster which came out a couple of weeks ago and this is a really great track in terms of its relation as well to Starburster which was this fuzz laden real kind of sea change in sound we talked a little bit about the kind of Octung baby to Joshua Tree or Joshua Tree to Octung baby kind of feel to it of a real fuzz and a real feel to their music coming into it this is great because it shows a more indie pop almost in terms kind of slightly Brit pop sound to their music it plays with the themes and nostalgia as you can see in the music video as well and it's interesting how the visual side of things is really playing into um, this new record again almost kind of like the Octone Baby Zoo TV kind of type feel will I uh, reference you two again I might who knows but the actual real interesting thing about this as well is just how melodic it is how just jangly almost it is there's a real feeling as I say of a kind of the Britpop-esque thing and dare I say it dear listener and viewer of course and um, there's almost a feel of Oasis about this especially on the vocal. Um, there's a Liam Gallagher kind of, when he says favourite, he kind of falls into this almost Liam Gallagher-esque kind of lilt to his voice, which is really interesting. Now, Fontaine's have always been great at these types of tracks in their albums. These kind of, these heartfelt, not as aggressive tracks, not as pulsating tracks, like Rory's tune on, on Doggerel was one of them, and I Love You as well on, on the last record. And they really capture that. They really are a band that, are of, that contain multitudes. 
So it's interesting to see in the build up to the new album, the different dimensions and takes they're doing. And Favourite, which is the new single, really I feel captures that and the heart of that so brilliantly. And it is a great, great track and it is on the playlist. So definitely check it out. You're probably already checking it out. Next up though, we'll go to Orla Gartland, who's been featured here before with her brand new single, Mine. Uh, which is an introspective uh, kind of track with uh, just beautifully orchestrated strings on it. And again, almost with Orla as well, there's a little bit, a little bit of a sea change into the ballad-esque type music um, here. And she just, her voice is so beautifully set to this and just, it's perfect. Perfect for this type of music. And an artist, you know, who's just, again, I think her career has really been on her own terms and in her own kind of way. And she's built up an audience and built up a following with music that is emotive and really captures it. You can kind of see that, that in the modern era of music, resonance, how a song resonates and the story of a song and the meaning of a song really resonates to the listener. There's been so many gigs I've gone to where artists, they don't know just, people just don't know the hits. They know everything. And Mitski's one where you go and everyone captures every single word. CMAT is another. And yeah, Orla Garland, very much the same. People just know the lyrics because they live and they breathe them. And mine is a, a, a brilliantly portrayed track and a great ballad, just motively led, weaved perfectly in with the production. And yeah, that's mine by um, Orla Gartland. And moving on now to the next track by Beauty Sleep, uh, firm favourites here at the last mix podcast. I do play favourites, I do. <laughs> and <laughs> Beauty Sleep are very much one of them. Big Sky is the name of the track and it is a far reaching synth pop track for them. And what I love about their recent output is they're really leaning into the size and scale of their music. It's big music, big production, fun, vivid, melodic. They play into their, their strengths as a duo, which is making the sound wider, 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 and bigger, 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 bigger. And that's what you want with synth You want that kind of retro thing going back to the 80s kind of type feel where the sounds are big, the production was big, and you, you kind of use that scale and scope and exploring just how much you can do. And these guys, and as well, the ear for a melody, the ear for a hook with these lads. I've always been so good. And yeah, so it is on Big Sky, which yeah, again, another firm favor for me from those guys. They really knock it out of the park. They know what to do with that type of sound. And interesting as well, that kind of undercurrent of that as well in the Irish music scene, if you look at um, Aeon Air, who we covered last week as well with his song, Confidential Man also has that kind of feel to it. But Beauty Sleep have always been um, a great band and, and a, a big favorite of mine. Big Sky is the name of the track for them and it's on the playlist. You can listen to it right now. Next up, we have Kieran Lavery featuring Morgana, who's been featuring on a couple of tracks. She's, uh, she's really kind of coming out and doing a solo thing at the moment, featuring on a few little sneaky features on people's tracks. And this is Oh My God, No, Your God, in brackets. <laughs> which is the name of the track and this is a really big sea change from Kieran Lavery and uh, yeah, it's a mood driven track yeah really kind of like oh just kind of dark and darkly lit dark corners to it there's a menace almost to the music there's a real kind of off kilterness to the vibe of the song and Morgana and, and Kieran on this really meld vocally so beautifully on it and so well. It's really great casting of putting the two together on this. And yeah, it, there's a power to it that I have not heard on Kieran's uh, previous works to this scale and almost a little bit like we were talking about uh, Beauty Sleep just there. There's big production going on. There's a big sound going on. There's a lot there. You know, it, in terms of big production, it doesn't have to be a million things all at once. You can use space and you can use sound to create a space between that really creates a menace and a meaning to the music. And Kieran Lavery and Morgana have really captured that with, oh my God, brackets, no, your God, close brackets. I don't think that's how he says it, but that's the name of the track. And it's a great, great track from Kieran and Morgana. Again, we're interested to hear some solo work from her coming in, hopefully, at some point this year. I don't know. I'm not involved with the release or the music of Morgana. She's not consulting me about what's going on, but she's doing great. And uh, yeah, some great kind of uh, features from her. Moving on now to AMAC, who has been covered a good few times on last week's podcast in recent weeks, releasing songs from this EP ABC side, baby. 
uh, which is the new EP from Amy Mac. And yeah, as I said, I've been really enjoying the sonic sea change from AMAC in recent weeks. Um, she's a great, great artist and she's really kind of found a way to, to kind of open the windows and open the curtains into a, into a bigger music, keeping the, the rhythmic element, the beat-led element of her music, but really capturing it. I've chosen Lowdown, which is a closing track on this Santa Tree track EP from AMAC. And this is a pulsating and intricate track as well. It's a bit darker than the other ones too and it's a bit more sparse, it's a bit more energy to it that kind of feeds into a, a more mood driven piece as well and the three tracks really work together as well and I think as well it's almost a sampler of how AMAC is changing and evolving her music and how she's moving and as I say maturing with her music as well because yeah it's, it's a great track not to say that her previous tracks weren't great but she's really changing it up, changing the style up, even in terms of her songwriting, which is a really hard thing to do. And yeah, she's really knocking it out of the park. And that's an EP, a three track EP, called ABC Side, baby. Um, there's no explanation mark there. Uh, <laughs> I just added it. I don't know why. But yeah, feel free to use that, Aoife, if you want. Uh, moving on now to a big summary feel with Kiryu, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, and Mbingo. Uh, as well, uh, a vibrant and fun track and this is real, a song for the summer from him and uh, yeah I have to say this is probably the first track of his I have featured and yeah I do love, dear listener and viewer, I do love a great, uh, a great summer track. I'm a big, big fan of anything jangled and melodic, <laughs> anything with a great rhythm to it. You have me. I'm a real tart for that kind of stuff. And yeah, this uh, Mbingu is that. Um, yeah, it really came across. It was, I think Tony Clayton Lay was how I came upon this track. I just saw it and he shared it. And I was like, well, if Tony Clayton Lay says it's good, I might just have a listen. And listen, I did, dear listener. And I really like it. So I hope you listen to it on the last mixtape Spotify playlist and we are going to close out the Count of Monty playlist those choices on the Spotify playlist this week with a brand new artist as well to the last mixtape podcast um, Sasha Samara with a single called Simmer and I was captivated by this this is real brooding alt pop subtle but inventive music from a brand new artist on the scene with a very different take and an emotionally resonant take plays into that kind of bedroom pop-esque kind of type feel. Again, we're kind of talking about the almost in the way of the Ulrich Ireland thing, really emotive and really kind of captures the songwriter's meaning and, and, and milieu within the music as well. And just, yeah, very striking. Again, you know, we're talking about all these artists. We were talking in the top five, or not top five, in consecutive uh, five albums of 2024 earlier on in the show and I was saying about how many de debut albums are coming out at the moment that just feel fully formed like the artist straight away gets it it's really cool it must we must delve into that at some point listener and viewer uh, about uh, how this is and how it's coming uh, you know young artists are coming along and they really know their stuff in terms of their production and their songwriting their, this is this is really great by Sasha Samara uh, Simmer and yeah she, she just gets it straight away and there's been a couple of singles but it's just like wow that's you're you're nailing that i don't want to go into saying that it's wholly billy eilish esque but it's in that world of that lord uh, Maggie Rogers or her earlier work and stuff like that and it kind of feels like that where an artist who once you know they open the scope themselves will open into a whole new sonic world but this is just brilliant and you can see it resonating with people because it's emotionally true it's emotionally honest and that you don't need a big production you don't need a big sound for that you can just lay it all out and that she does with a really really subtle subtle track so that's um sasha samara there and that is the last track chosen by the count of monty playlist for this week but fear not dear listener the count of monty playlist will ride again next week with another list of must listen to tracks but you can check out all of these tracks on TLMT's Irish Mixtape on Spotify or just check out the artists on Spotify or listen to them however you want to listen to them but do listen to new music when and where you can. But that's it for the Count of Monty playlist though this week. Yes, dear listener and viewer, before we go, we have some gigs happening around Dublin town this week. 
Beyond the Pale is happening um, as we speak. So if you are there in the future, do tell us how you got on. C Sessions is taking place also up in Donegal with Jazzy and D Keen Ducrow and Johnny Marr, legendary Johnny Marr will also be performing. Liam Gallagher, speaking about legends, will be playing the Three Arena on the 23rd and the 24th, uh, celebrating 30 years of Definitely Maybe, a seminal, seminal record. We were only just talking about the influence of that record there when we were talking about the Fontaines and yeah, what a great record that was and what a great performer, what a great band. Uh, Troy Sivian is playing uh, the Three Arena on the 25th, followed by Tom Waddell, also playing the Three Arena on the 26th. Aurora is playing the National Stadium on the 26th as well. Green Day playing Marley Park and then Taylor Swift at the Viva Stadium playing two nights, need we say any more, 29th and the 30th. And then we're back to Marley Park again with Longitude with a packed lineup. So we are very much in the thick of it when it comes to the big festival, big gigs, big gigs and festival season <laughs> uh, happening around Ireland at the moment. And so it goes and there it went. But before I go, thank you for listening and viewing the Last Mix Out podcast. Uh, you can subscribe to us on all the usual places and spaces, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on YouTube if you want to watch the visuals. If you're on Spotify, you're also probably watching the visuals as we speak. You can also submit your music or gigs to me via Stephen at lastmixout.com in any way you want, and just let me know about your new music and gigs happening. But for now, that was the Last Mix Out podcast. I was Stephen White. You were the listener and the viewer. Hey, so long. <laughs>